What's up guys, Dr. Quinn Hennick here from Dark Side Strength and Juggernaut Training Systems. We're here with Just the Tip Tuesday. We've got a lot of your questions on Facebook. I'm going to talk about rotator cuff strengthening. And for all the other guys who ask questions, I either didn't quite understand what you were asking or we've covered it in the past. So I'm going to personally go on Facebook tonight and comment on every question and either send you guys links to videos that we've already done or kind of follow up on your questions that you asked to get a little bit more info. But back to rotator cuff strengthening, a lot of people ask what the rotator cuff actually is. It's just a group of four muscles, and we've got Captain Christine Drinkowitz here, and she's an actual captain. The rotator cuff, three muscles in the back here, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor, and then you've got the subscapularis kind of underneath the shoulder blade. And what those muscles do is they help hold the shoulder together. So as I'm moving through all my ranges, those muscles just kind of keep it in line and keep it centrated as some people say and so with the rotator cuff strength is important but it's more so about timing because the rotator cuff is reflexive so we need those muscles to to turn on at the right time just as much or even more important than the amount of force that they produce with their contraction so an exercise that i really like is called the screwdriver not the drink christine is going to lay on her back we're going to start in our favorite 9090 hip lift position where we have our feet up against the wall. That's just to kind of get the pelvis and the rib cage in neutral so that the only thing we're worrying about here is the shoulder. And the screwdriver goes a little bit like this. So I have people hold the kettlebell with the bottom up. And I like the bottom up position because it's self-limiting. Greg Cook talks about this a lot. You can't use a heavy enough weight to screw yourself up, basically. So the weight can still be light, but you're still getting all the reflexive benefits for the rotator cuff. So what Christina's going to do and she's going to start with an inhale and an exhale, first of all, to set the rib cage. And then she's going to lightly reach up to the ceiling. And then she's going to rotate the whole arm externally there and then internally. And so it's just like a piston. And she's rotating from the shoulder. And this is the screwdriver continuing to breathe. So you see you get all the reflexive benefits of that stability. And that kettlebell wants to pull her up off axis. And so her rot rotator cuff has to work to keep the ball in the socket. And the way we can progress this is we can scoot away from the wall and start to integrate everything from head to toe. So very similar 90-90 position. Yeah. But now we don't have the wall to support. So we have to use more of an abdominal contraction and a lot of stability through the trunk in order to keep her hips and pelvis stable, ribcage stable, while she's performing the same exercise. And when we can even add a dead bug variation where she lowers a, a heel and then alternates that way. So we're really integrating the whole thing. Now the rule here is that movement should be pain free. Okay, so don't try to jam into range that you don't have. Um, if you're just coming off an injury, just be real easy. Don't start with anything over 15, 20 pounds and work your way up. I also got a question from the great Chad Wesley Smith regarding Afro maintenance. Um, Typically, I don't do anything for my spectacular afro. I'll take a shower, I'll do one of these, and I'm out the door. But if I need to go somewhere to uh, look halfway fancy, I was referred this product. This is Garnier Fructis Finishing Paste. And so what I'll do here is I'll make sure my hair is a little damp, I'll put a little water in it, just not soaked, but just a little wet. And I'll take maybe a, a dime size of this paste, and I'll just kind of Run it through, especially on the sides where it can kind of, kind of get kind of fuzzy. I want to calm that down a little bit, and it gives me that sleek, wet look, but without the grease. And so that's just a tip.